Pearson, one-on-one, sponsored by Mont Lick Injury Attorneys. My first guests tonight are a non-traditional power couple. Jessica Depart is the founder and CEO of a multi-million dollar hair care company, Kaleidoscope, and her wife is Shante Harris Dupart, better known as rapper The Brat. They share their life, their love, and their new baby boy on the popular TV show, Brat Loves Judy, now in its third season. I sat down with them on Pride Night at the Atlanta Hawks game, where the Brat performed at halftime. It's the Brat, it's JT, tell them. Oh, baby. So lay back and listen hey. as I catch up a pivot and I drink this new way just like it's Astro and Simpson, cause I say what, say what, say what. Let me hear you. The Brat is the bomb. Her first album, Funkstified, went platinum and made her the first female solo rap act to receive platinum certification. She's been nominated for two Grammys, three Billboard Awards, a BET and an MTV Award. She's busy on the Ricky Smiley Morning radio show and TV shows Dish Nation and Brat Loves Judy. Four million followers love her on Instagram, and one of them is her wife, Jessica Depart, also called Judy. What began as business soon became personal. Yeah, I actually reached out to her team for her to do promo with me. And then she surprised me at one of my tour stops when I was on tour teaching entrepreneurs. So she popped up on me, yeah. Yeah, I was doing promo for Miracle Drops, and uh, she was in Atlanta doing these a, a tour, and I was like, I wanted to see the woman who I was, you know, doing a tour, doing the promo for. And I go into this place, and it's like packed. It's like a convention center packed, and I'm like, okay, what does this lady do? I thought she sold hair products. And she, you know, it took her like 30 minutes to get to me. I'm sitting there waiting like, I no, I'm not waiting this long. I'm the back. But she was signing autographs and taking pictures. I was like, okay. So I patiently waited when she finally got over to me. I was like, okay, it's crazy in here. Oh, uh, I'm going to the studio, so let's link later. And did you know at that time that she was the one? No, I had no idea. I had no idea. I didn't even know she was interested at that time. She had been around every celebrity, a lot of celebrities doing promo for her and stuff. So I didn't think, I just thought, you know, she wanted me to do more promo. So did you know she was gay? And did you know she was gay? I didn't know she was, no. Did you know I was? I wasn't out the closet yet, but everybody feel like they knew. So I told her I was interested in her, so I didn't know if she was gay or not, but I was gonna find out when I said it. Oh my God, yes, that night. Yes, yeah, she, <laughs> so, so right? she said, let's link later, so I thought she was meaning. No, I'll let's see. link later. <laughs> So when I met up with her and I was like, oh, she was trying to do business? I was like, okay, well, maybe I need to tell her what I'm here for. I would never be that blunt with somebody like, yo, let's link later. Like to, no. Yeah. I was. Well, I would be very respectful. I'm I was. like that. So she gets there. We're talking about hair stuff and, you know, and, and she goes, I'm interested in you. And I'm like. Not, not exactly. So we were talking about things that we interested in. So she was telling me stuff that interests her, and I said, well, I'm interested in you. And? Oh, man, it messed me up, Monica. <laughs> it's just so threw me. I was so lost. I mean, oh, my goodness. I burned a hole in the couch. I tried to drink. I tried to pour me some drink to, to calm my nerves down. I, I poured it and missed my whole mouth. Like, it was so embarrassing. I had butterflies. I was nervous. I was shaking. Like, I was like, I get, looked in the mirror like, girl, you get yourself together. You're the brat. What are you doing? But yeah, it, it messed me up because I had never had anybody just say, I'm interested in you. Like, bam, like that. Like, I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't know what to do with myself. How does she improve you? Oh, my goodness. She makes me better 100%. Uh, oh, man, my anger. She helps me think about my anger. She helps me to be more grateful for the little things. She helps me with my patience. Uh, she helps me not stress about things. Like the other day, I was in the baby room and I left the water running because I was washing bottles and it ran through to the basement and it made the basement leak. And she wasn't there and I called her. I was panicking, I was upset. She said, let it go don't live in it don't live there we'll get it fixed let it go you're gonna have a great day today she just she, she makes me think about financials better she just makes me really think you know i feel like a full-blown full-blown adult <laughs> being her wife she teaches me so much and i think that's what's so great about it and because i love her so much i'm willing to listen you know and i don't like to listen to a lot of people i like to have my way and do things my way but 
she makes a lot of sense and everything she says is almost right. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> what about the brand? I was fortunate enough to watch an amazing love story with my parents. Um, and in experience in life, I never thought that I would be able to see that again or see that for myself. And then getting with her, I've now not only been able to experience a great love story, but a better love story than I saw witnessing. So um, I feel like she renewed my faith in humanity and she renewed my faith in love. And she, stop. <laughs> and she teaches me how to be, because I'm a person that turns the other cheek off this, so she teaches me how to actually try to stand up for myself, because I will be the person that a lot of people might walk over, because I feel like God is going to get me, you know, going to get them back. I don't have to do anything, but she is the person that helped me say no, or not take as, not turn my cheek as many times, or not give as many chances, and... Yeah, she makes me better in that, even in my business decisions, because there's a lot of stuff I'll let slide. But now it's like, now nah, we ain't doing you're that. Paying in people, right? I'm, I'm fine. I'm, are you not getting 17 chances? You fired after the second time. Faith and love. Coming up, Debrat and Jessica share what it's like raising their son in the church as a same-sex couple, plus how another couple tackles marriage and home remodeling on their hit HGTV show. Debrett is from Chicago, but Atlanta became home thanks to producer Jermaine Dupri and his So So Deft label, who produced her first album, walked her down the aisle when she married Judy in February of 2022 and helped refine her name. Well, I got the nickname Brat from being a spoiled brat, and then when I got ready to uh, be a rapper, I decided to keep it and turn it into something positive, but I couldn't use Brat because it was taken, so Jermaine Dupri decided to put the in front of it and the was taken so he said da we'll call you the brat and that's how i got it <laughs> you said you got it because you were a spoiled brat yes ma'am what do you mean by you were a spoiled brat well you know uh my grandparents pretty much spoiled me my parents spoiled me i got a lot of things when i was a kid um like all the jordans that i wanted all the british knights i loved i was a sneakerhead even as a kid like mostly everything i wanted i probably got as a kid, and if I didn't, I probably threw a tantrum to get it and I ended up getting it. I'm thinking that my son is gonna do the same thing to pay that. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, you know there's such a thing as payback. I heard. True legend is Judy's fourth child and DeBrat's first. Getting pregnant was not easy, but once accomplished with Judy's eggs and donated sperm, Brat delivered true legend at the age of 48. So, how has that been in going back to performing? How about breastfeeding? Oh man, breastfeeding is a job. I didn't realize it was gonna be such a job, but I love being a mommy. I love catering to our son. I love just loving him and watching him grow and learning his little ways and stuff. Um, breastfeeding is like every three, four hours, I got my pump in the back. Like you, you have to be committed to it because that's his source of food. And I'm not gonna have my child be like lacking food. So I make sure I pump when I'm at work, wherever I am to make sure he's good. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Judy, you had children. So how did you get her through this process? Because I remember you did have a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. How did you get her through this process? Um, I supported everything, no matter what the question was. Um, I tried to document <laughs> as much of the journey as I could. I had a um, dumb question. So right, I but I, I never I never made her feel like any question was too ridiculous of an right, ass. Right. So I, I supported her. I made sure anytime she was real inquisitive or anything seemed like it's wrong or because you know well she's a she per, she worries right. So I try to make her as worryless as possible during the process. I try to support her during the Tell process. Everything. Why don't you? Um, <laughs> We went to all of our appointments. We went to the mater m maternal fetal specialist, yes. to the gynecologist. Let go. Right, we. Dr. Jackie. Yeah. yeah, and I just made sure, I told her every day how good she was doing. I made sure to tell her that multiple times a day, you're doing so good. Yeah. Especially towards the end, because she started to experience some of the spreading of the pelvic area. Oh. <laughs> that, ooh, I didn't like, that. that was probably the worst part for me. Do you think you'll have a second? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, no, not myself. It probably wouldn't be a good thing because of my age and stuff. Last question. When you think about where you two are now with this adorable little boy, true legend, what is it you want for him? Because remember, he is coming into a world that whereas we are very accepting, how do you explain to him or get him prepared for what will come next when people question his parenting? I believe, and this might be the rainbow butterflies, the me that thinks everything is perfect and the world doesn't have bad people, but I believe if we raise our son up to show him what love is, and the value of love that everything else will align. I do feel like the details will have to be ironed out and explained, but I feel like as long as a human being can learn that love conquers everything, it shouldn't matter a race, a gender, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter denomination, like none of that. None of that should matter. You should love a human being for being a human being, and they should be great at being a human being. Definitely. And we'll explain everything to him. We'll make sure he knows and understands everything. We're going to be the best parents that we can be to him. And we're going to raise a child in the way that he should go. And that includes raising true legend in the church. He was christened by their pastor, Reverend William Murphy III, at the Dream Center Church of Atlanta. How do you deal with people who have a problem with your relationship? In the church, your church, William Murphy and the members there are very accepting, but how do you deal with it? You know what, very recently, this thing has kind of taken legs. Uh, where people are having an open discussion about things that are accepted and aren't accepted, and we are in a different time. And if you're not willing to accept people as they are in the church, where are they supposed to go? I feel like as Christians, we're supposed to welcome people no matter where they are on a faith walk. We're not supposed to judge people on what they're doing in their life. Just because my sin is visible don't mean that you have, you are sinless. So I feel like yeah. the the church that we belong to is a different kind of church because they are inviting to everyone and it's causing people that may not have ever had have had faith before in God to now start to want to have a relationship. And even though they might not stop cursing that day, they might not stop doing what they want to do that day, they are now starting their journey and having a faith walk. So if, if, if somebody never had a prayer life before and now they're starting to pray, even if it's three times That's a week. a good thing. Right. If it's saving souls is saving souls. Why does it have to be isolated and black and white? So that's just my take on it. And I know he holds my hand. I was surprised to learn that the one singing mm -hmm. about I know he holds my hand <laughs> was you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew up in church. Me and Ty Tribbett used to switch out on the drums together in the Pentecostal church. Yeah, I know everything, the Bible front to back. I am a grandma's baby. I went to church seven days a week. So, yeah, my faith is in God. I'm a true God-fearing woman. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of Monica Pearson one-on-one, -on -one, check out the links on your screen and click the subscribe button.